Majesty's Pride. Chapter 13. Graham. I had to admit defeat. Miss Majesty got the best of me and she knew it. I'm pretty sure she got a kick out of the whole thing. The posse would have found it funny too, but I had no intention of telling them. Even if I had been authorized to demote the witch, I would not have wanted to share how she won. I spent the rest of the afternoon tidying up my apartment. I even mopped the kitchen and bathroom, which I normally didn't bother doing. The entire time I was cleaning, I could hear cats and witches laughing at me. I knew that Majesty or Little Birdie would tell the other cats everything. I don't really know why, but the thought of the other cats bothered me. It made me wonder why I was a hunter in the first place. When I was recruited, the chief told us stories of how witches were evil, rotten, no-good hags who enjoyed screwing people over. He said they used their powers for personal gain and not for the betterment of mankind. According to him, they were morally obligated to use their magic to help people. In my 18 years of service as a hunter, I never actually witnessed a witch doing anything malevolent or cruel. All I had to go on was secondhand stories of all their sorcery and scandal. I convinced myself after my first successful hunt that it was for the greater good that witches be suppressed. If I had been on active duty, I would have let little Bertie lead me to her mistress and snapped her fluffy little neck while Miss Majesty watched. I felt the shame just thinking about it. The chief didn't go into a lot of details about why the witches had to see us kill their cats. My 20-year-old self didn't ask too many questions back in the day. I accepted whatever the posse said and did my job. They paid well, offered global travel, and guaranteed camaraderie. At the time, it was too great of an offer to pass up. After dealing with Majesty, I wondered if passing is what I should have done.